So we have a New Yorker boiler here we're going to be cleaning this morning. Um, it's an FR series, the Dash 98, but as far as cleaning goes, they're all pretty similar. So the first thing we're going to do, which we've done, is turn the power off. And um, then we're going to shut off our oil too at the tank right before the filter. All right, so now we have our oil off and we, first you also want to make sure the boiler runs, at least that's a good practice. So you can turn the aquastat up and uh, you turn that knob up to a higher temp and that knob up to a higher temp and it should run. As soon as you see it fire up, you're good. Then you can turn them back down. So the first thing we're going to do, make sure the power's off. You're going to take these two screws out. You can use your flip socket or a flathead either way. I like to make sure there's no electric there. We know there's not, and there wouldn't be anyway, but power's off. So then you take your 7 16th. Right, you might grab me a rag. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> so, so you're going to take your 7 16th. This line coming from your oil tank is your um, low pressure. Then once it hits this, which is your pump, it goes into the high pressure line and into your nozzle. So... To get the nozzle out, you're going to have to take off your high pressure. So take your 7 16 Sometimes they're a little tight. <laughs> you're going to take this off. You might get a drop or two of oil. We like to put a pan down or some rags, but it really shouldn't be much of anything. I like to loosen the other side too, just get it totally out of the way. Then your next step is going to take this little ring off. A lot of times they're very tight, so you use channel lock or whatever. And also take that off. Both turning uh, counterclockwise. I like to hang it on the high pressure line just so you don't lose it. So now your nozzle's ready to come out. You just slide them out. Some furnaces it can be really tough. You might have to turn it upside down like this to get it out. But there we go, that came out pretty easy. Now, you're looking for a few key things. First thing you're looking for is on these, which are the electrodes. Um, if there's any damage or if it looks like the tips are burning up or disfigured or if it's not the right um, distance between them, it should be pretty much just in line with the tip of the nozzle and you're gonna go for that width. Um, there is a tool that you'll be provided with if you are gonna do this or you can buy I'll show you exactly how to set these, but uh, they look good and we're not going to change them because we know it's been working. So you're going to take some cleaner, spray them off, wipe them off. Sometimes if there's anything built up on them, you might need a, a brush, but these look pretty good. So we're just going to wipe them off. Um, you don't have to be too gentle with them, but they can bend and they can break. So don't go crazy. And your next step is going to be to remove your nozzle. So your first thing, if you don't know, is on where your wrench is going to go, there's two numbers. You have the gallons per hour, and you have the angle at which the nozzle is built for. Every single furnace has a different nozzle. Now, if you don't know what nozzle your furnace has, if, like he said, it's, this is an FR99-122W, if you look up this furnace, you can find a manual or find a helpful resource online and it should tell you what nozzle it needs. But we know this has been burning great. We've been serving it for years. So we're just gonna replace it with the exact nozzle that was in it because we know it's the right nozzle. So your next step will be to remove the nozzle. So you take your 3 fourths and your 5 eighths. Your 3 fourths goes here on the bottom collar and your 5 eighths is gonna go on the nozzle collar and you're gonna turn them. We like to put them like this so you can squeeze against yourself gives you a lot more torque because sometimes these nozzles are on pretty tight. This one wasn't so bad, but anyway, you're going to just spin it off. Then we're going to cut it here and go to the next step. But basically what you're going to do is pull this one out. There's going to be some oil that comes out. You're going to spray your cleaner through here. Make sure everything looks great. You're going to use a brake clean or, I mean, you can look up what to use, but we use brake clean like you would for a car. Spray that out. Get your new nozzle, turn it in, and then just snug it real tight with your 5 eighths, just the opposite direction.
So with the nozzle, two more things just real quick. You're gonna wanna make sure this is really tight. I mean, don't start on threading it, but it should be tight. And also you never wanna touch the filter on the bottom or the tip on the top if you can help it because you can put dirt in it. Uh, your next step, which many times won't be needed, I don't think it will be today, if there's any junk or a lot of oil in the actual tube here, you're going to spray some in there, wipe it out. Uh, we'll do so, but it, it really doesn't look bad at all, so it shouldn't take much. So you can just go in there with a, your hand and wipe it out. Uh, you also want to make sure that these, which are your, um, your igniter springs, make sure they look good, which they look great here, and your CAD cell. Uh, we'll have other videos on how this all works, but just for a simple cleaning. If that looks clear, these look clear, they look good, so we're not too worried about it. We're going to put our nozzle back in. You ready? Mm -hmm. uh, one more thing in the burner tube is at the very end, it's pretty hard to see, but uh, there's that little metal. It looks like a maybe pentagon. And um, if that's dirty, that, that is what affects your airflow going into the flame, so... You're going to want to wipe that off as well. If it's really dirty, you may need to use a, a brush, but this one looks like it's fine, so we're just going to wipe it off just to make it clean. So now we're going to put the nozzle back in, whole nozzle assembly. Again, you're going to try and keep the nozzle clean um, going back in. It can be tough, but you want to do your best not to drag it on any edges or anything. The tip of it should go back in. And you don't have to worry about where it's set because you're going to put it right back through this hole. So the distance will set itself. So now we're just going to do the complete reverse order. Throw this thing back on. You just need to make it finger tight just so it doesn't go anywhere. You don't have to use a wrench or anything. Make sure it's pushed all the way through. It's, it is and it's tight. So again, just the opposite. Re-loosen with your 7 16 Put him back on there. Sometimes these can be a pain, but you can get it on. You never want to start with your wrench. Always start with your fingers, so then you know you're not stripping the bolt, or the, uh, stripping out the uh, threads, rather. So make them both. These are high pressure, so when you start this thing up, you're going to know if you have a leak, but uh, you definitely want to make them tight. You don't need to kill them, but... Make sure they're very tight. So the next part you're gonna do, now this is pivotal that you turned off the oil. We mentioned that earlier, but if you don't turn off the oil, when you pull this pump off, you're gonna be getting oil out. So we're still gonna get oil out. You're gonna wanna make sure you have a little container or rags or something like that to catch oil. But um, we're gonna pull this off. Usually you're gonna need an Allen key, but actually for this one, we can use our flipper again, same one for up here. We're going to close this just so no dust or anything gets in it. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to pull. It should have two bolts on the top, two bolts on the bottom. All of them will be in the corners. So we're going to pull them all off. And we will get a little bit of oil out, but it shouldn't be too much. So far, so good. So we pull this off. There's two things in here you're going to want to do. Well, a few things, but two main components. So you spray this out in here, which usually is nothing. Now this is going to be your strainer. Um, you can buy at Sid Harvey APR or wherever online. Uh, it depends on where you are. You can buy this strainer in this gasket. We usually, this one looks dirty, but it can definitely be sprayed out. So we're just going to spray this strainer out, and then you definitely just straight up replace this gasket. So um, this is considered an A-pump, this style. So if you would just go online or call your local HVAC retailer, they'll have, uh, this would be an H or a uh, A-pump strainer, A-pump gasket, or just the gasket, whatever you find you need. So we're going to take brake clean, which we're running out of. And this looks like it's coming off pretty easy, so... All right, so we have our new strainer here. We have our cleaned, or we have our clean strainer and our new pump gasket. Now with these, the only important thing is you'll see all the holes on them. 
the two holes here and the one that's in the middle, not the bottom. This is the bottom, this is the top, all right? So you really want this top hole to line up with that hole there. Um, it is actually pretty important, so these are not, you can't put them on upside down. And you just pop your strainer on. I'm gonna wipe this out, but it's pretty clean. And you just put it back on, simple enough. Uh, these can line up a little tricky, so you want to start all four of your bolts before you crank one down all the way. Uh, as you can see here, this one's kind of a little cockeyed because of the oil line, which is not a problem, but you definitely want to start all your bolts. All right, this is pretty tight. Um, again, with this on the oil side, you're gonna see oil if you have a leak. But again, you, you're gonna want to make it tight just to have avoid that. So that's it for the pump. Now we're gonna do the oil filter here. So normally this nut on top, well, almost always, it'll be five eighths wrench. You're just gonna turn it uh, counterclockwise as you would and this bottom cup is gonna come down. So there's gonna be a good amount of oil in here. Again, you're gonna to wanna to really make sure that this is closed or you're gonna be in for, for a surprise. Now this is a little older, so it's a lot bigger. I'm gonna to have to use an adjustable, which is not ideal, but that's all right. You're gonna run into some different stuff along the way. So as soon as I break it, I like to hold this as I then get it loose, because then you're not at the mercy of the the filter, you're you're in control of whether it's gonna leak or whatever it may be. So it's finger tight now. I'm gonna pull it off. Now one thing to make note of, there's a, uh, a gasket right here. You're gonna replace that. So you pull it down. You're gonna have some oil, but your container should get most of it. You're gonna pull him out. As you can probably see uh, it's time for a new filter this guy is pretty pretty dirty so um you're never going to want to try and clean off these filters uh once they're done they're done so that's that there's also another gasket around the top here so we're going to pull that off that will all come in your filter um there's still quite a bit of oil in this cup now if you pull your filter off and it's perfectly clean, you can leave the oil in, pop it right back on, but seeing how gunked up that filter is, I'm gonna dump it out and clean the cup out uh, real good. Just to make sure that everything's clean and running as it should. Another thing to note, which is sort of hard to tell sometimes, but uh, the oil itself there looked pretty good, so we shouldn't have an oil problem. We just got some gunk in there. But uh, the oil itself looks all right, so... If you do come across bad oil, you can advise the customer that uh, they may need, you know, an additive or something of that sort. Probably be pretty hard to see, but there's a good amount of gunk in here. Nothing too concerning. I don't see any holes, but it's not clean. So you're going to spray that out. Sometimes if it's really bad, you'll use like a pick or a brush, but this is mostly just surface stuff. It really shouldn't, it'll come off pretty easy with, with a little spray, a little love. I like to shake it around to get all the loose stuff and then we can dump it in there. And then if you like, you can dry it out with a, a rag. I like to do so just make sure you really got everything out because uh, this is your first line of defense as soon as you get dirt in your nozzle your furnace is going to stop working you're going to have a service call so you're going to want to make sure that this first and biggest filter is always going to be as clean as you can get it Let's spray that one more time real quick but it should be good i was going to put this together first but 
You also have a lot of gunk up here most of the time. So I like to clean the outside as well. You wouldn't really have to. Spray in there. And then you're gonna wipe that down as well. Which the top can be as important, if not more important, because a lot of times that's where your junk is gonna be hiding. And if it's at the top, it could go right over the filter and then you're you're in trouble. So now we wipe that down. I'm gonna feel with my fingers. I don't feel any gunk. Obviously you can look if you're concerned, but I sprayed it, I know it's clean. You're gonna take this gasket off, put the replacement on, which comes in your, your filter. And you're gonna put your filter in here. And then you use this big gasket and it goes around here. And you're, you're almost always going to just replace what was in it beforehand. Um, if they get a new furnace or something and don't change this, you may have to change it, but uh, that would be pretty, pretty rare, I would say. So the big thing with this is you're going to want to have it lined up. Um, usually it'll line up for you, but sometimes it'll go left, right a little bit. So you just want to make sure it's lined up. And then again, you're going to make this really tight. All right. So now you can, while you still have your container here, I like to turn the oil on, assuming you have your pump cover on, because then we're going to know right away if we have an oil leak or not, which I doubt, but we'll make sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, geyser. <laughs> so you won't know for sure, because as you can hear, it's filling the cup up, but... As it sits right now, we're not seeing any leaks, so I think we're good. So there's a few different ways. We're going to finish up all the oil side, and then we're going to move on to this. So if you just need the oil side, we're about to be done. Uh, the last thing you're going to need to do is bleed the air out of your system that we just introduced by taking both these filter covers off. So the boiler is controlled up here by your Aquastat. Now again, all this will be going into more depth um, in a further video or further instruction, but basically... Right now, you could jump your thermostat on there, but that's kind of a lot of work. Um, not a lot of work, but it's harder than what we're gonna do. We're just gonna turn these knobs up when we have the power on, and it'll run. And um, if you don't quite get the air out in the first cycle, you're gonna have to keep resetting your primary. But um, this is, as you can hear, gravity feeding already, so we might get lucky and do it in the first cycle. Um, we'll see. You're going to have your 3 8 wrench. Well, you're definitely here going to want to put down rags because you most likely will get a few drops that are going to miss your cup. So it comes out a little haphazardly. So you have your 3 8 and you're just going to turn this loose and air and oil will come out when it's trying to run. Um, we do have our power off still, so what we're going to do is we're going to check these 180, 150. We're going to turn them way up, so that's going to be ready to run as soon as we hit the power, because this now thinks that it wants to run up to 200 degrees, which is what we want. But you really need to make sure this comes back down as soon as you're finished, or you'll be in trouble. So we're going to get our cup here. We're going to loosen this. Now my assistant's going to turn the power back on, and you're going to see here some... Some will fire right away. This is a little bit more of an advanced primary, so it's going to go through its cycle, and then you're going to fire, and you're going to see a lot of air and a lot of oil. Be ready to kill the power. Not yet, but we're pretty high on a... We're running out of space here, so we may have to cut it short, but as you can see, we don't have much oil. You can kill it. Now, sometimes it'll take a long time to bleed. Sometimes it'll be real short like that. So you're gonna wait till you have a real steady stream of oil. We're running out of room and we had a pretty steady stream, so I'm gonna end it, but we may still have air in the system. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we finished up the oil side, the only other thing we're gonna do with the burner is at the very end when everything's clean, we're gonna run it and we're gonna test it with our, our uh, Testo is the brand name, but it just tests the, the flue gases. Anyway, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna take the stack off. 
I'm going to vacuum both out, brush them both out, and that's really it. So you can use, we have a, it connects to our drill. You can use a flat head, whatever. It'll just take a long time. But um, I like to lay down a, we're most likely going to get some soot or some, you know, anything, dust, whatever. So I like to cover this up. Wouldn't really matter. You can back it off, but it just makes it easy. So we're going to take this off. It's helpful to have a partner with some of these doors. It can be a real pain. They're kind of heavy and like this one is not on a hinge. So it might be a little tough to get off, but with a drill, it shouldn't be too painful. Here's where you may not see soot or you may see soot. It all depends on, there's, there it is. <laughs> all depends on how clean it is. This one has been cleaned for a couple years, so it doesn't seem like it's plugged or anything, but definitely has some things that we're gonna need to vacuum. So as you can see, this is about as clean a boiler you're going to see. Um, there's still a lot of black soot laying there, so it definitely needs cleaned. But a lot of the time, if it's not burning right, in these tubes, when you pull those out, which are called baffles, you're going to see a lot of junk, which we got a lot of junk out, but this shouldn't be too painful. So we're going to get set up here. All right, so now we're just going to pull these baffles out. We're going to brush them off. We're going to vacuum this cover off. And we're going to brush this and vacuum the inside out. Now, the biggest thing with the, these parts and the cover is they uh, they break up pretty easily. So you don't want to, if you're vacuuming it and it's coming apart, just leave it how it is or get a new one. Um, it's not really worth sucking up all your insulation to try and get it clean.
So now that we did this, all we have left is the back. Um, we're gonna put the cover back on. This I was putting on some of the bolts. Um, this probably didn't need it because they came out pretty easy, but this is called Never Seize. Um, you can get tons of things that are similar. I'm gonna paint up all the bolts a little bit because then next time they'll come out real nice, which this time they did anyway, so we really didn't need it, but this takes a minute to make your job much easier the next time. So I'm just the real, the real this Another thing, um, if you're using a drill, you like to run them in, but then you always want to double check with a wrench or a, a flathead because you never know how tight it is with an impact. It's a little tight back here, but um, a lot of these are going to have a lot of screws in them. Customer informed us that I only see one. He said this is very tight fitting, so there might not be many screws in it. But um, if it's loose, or it's just generally a good practice to have at least one screw in each uh, fitting. But we're going to take all the screws out and then we're going to pull it off. One more thing to note is um, many, many times we go out to a house to do a cleaning and the customer will say, Oh, we never saw anyone ever take the stack off. Well, the stack is really quite a pain to take off, in all honesty, but it is one of, if not the most important things to do. So, um, although the customer may not know that you're you're cheating, um, ultimately it could catch up to you. And even if it doesn't, it's just the right thing to do is take it off. So, uh, we're going to take it off and probably pass it out there because, like I said, I'm in a bit of a squeeze here. But once you get all the screws out, it should just knock out like that, top and bottom. And I'm going to hand it over here. And you're going to brush and vac it out. And also the back chamber here, you're also going to brush and vac out similarly to what we did earlier. Uh, this is the back of where those tubes we brushed out is. This is where it comes out. So it all needs brushed and vacuumed out. Well, you got a little bit in there. We vacuumed out the bottom chamber, it's kind of hard to record, but it'll be the same. You just want to make sure it's totally clean. Um, the, in the actual stack where the chimney is, there's a bit of junk. It all looks pretty small and loose, so we're just going to use our vacuum. But if you're really, a lot of times you'll see a bird or a bird's nest, you're going to want to bring a five-gallon bucket and scrape it out with your hand. But this should all back up pretty, pretty good. You can hear it. So we just finished vacuuming this out. Another thing with we were talking about earlier is it's easy to skip. Um, if that clogs up, you could not only mess up the boiler, but you could literally be, you know, putting people's lives at risk by, you know, the carbon monoxide could back up and come out the other side. So it, it is extremely important that you at the very least take it off and check that it's clear and you really should vacuum it. But we're going to move on to cleaning the stack now. So I like to take the vacuum, put it down at the bottom, opposite the part I'm going to be working, stick it in there just to get all the junk that's going to fall down. Turn it on. You're going to take your brush. This doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, to get this totally clean, you'd have to rinse it out with water and soap. You're just getting the big stuff and getting the, the soot that you can get to. But, you know, you don't need to take every single part off and make it shine. It's not as important as, you just need to make sure it's very clear and you get all the stuff that it was just sitting in there, so. I 
take it out and get some more. As you can see, there was actually a bird in in the stack. So that's again a reason. You know, you don't know what's in the stack. This was all very clean, and there still was a bird in there. So it's very important that you check. And uh, this was not planted. This was in the stack. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now we got it pretty well clean, we're going to put it back on and screw it back together and then we're going to run it. Should be it for the cleaning. We have our testo here. Um, if you're not a professional, you probably shouldn't be, you can do the rest of the cleaning, but you can't really know just by looking at the flame how to set it up. Anyway, we're going to turn this on. We're going to turn the furnace on, let it run, and it'll tell us how we're burning. You said the power is on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 150, 170. Lockout. Okay. From when we bled it, it's on lockout, so all these are different, but... Usually if you hold down a button, it'll reset. It's about to. So we fired up, we're good. If you hear it stuttering, which we might, all it is most of the time, you just need to bleed it a little bit more. There's a little air stuck in there. So I'm gonna let it run for 15, 20 seconds, and then I'm gonna stick my probe in that has been zeroing out, and we'll get a reading. While we're waiting for the reading, um, if you come down here, on most of these, you can adjust the oil pressure on the pump, but usually you're not going to do that. That'd be a little more advanced. All we're going to be really looking at is the air here. So you have your big air band on the side here, which is what this notch is showing, and you have your, your smaller adjustment, which is on the front. So these are very tight. They're not going to move, and we might not move them if the reading is good. But what we're going to do if we need more or less air is we're going to open them both and you can slide these and this is this metal will be open at the bottom and you can add or take away however you deem fit. So our testo should be pretty close. We'll check it out. So if you come here, it might be hard to see your air. You want it anywhere from four to six roughly with oil. Your CO2 anywhere from 11 to 12 and a half. The bigger thing that we like to look at is parts per million. That's your carbon monoxide. You want it to be under 100. Zero is perfect. Um, especially with the oil, you're not going to hit zero. It's going to be burning just a little off almost always. It's also 88% efficient, which for an oil boiler is excellent. 19, like I said, is excellent. So we're going to let it run and make sure, but. We most likely will not adjust this in any way. All these readings look very, very good. So I also like at the very end, when you're totally done, you're going to want to clean up the outside just a little bit because we had the luxury of the customer being here to watch us clean it so he knows we did a, a solid job. But for most, they're only going to see the outside. So you can do the best cleaning in the world. If you leave the outside looking real bad, they're going to think you barely did anything. So... Um, while it might not be fair, you want to take the extra time and, you know, spray the ground around it, make sure it's clean, make sure it smells good. So, uh, they have faith that you did a good job and they're, they're happy with the service. Should be it. <laughs>